Welcome to the second part of our series on trying to estimate uncertainties using a graphical method from Excel. Now we've got to the point where we've collected all our data and we have it in a table. Now we're going to select those columns and try and plot them as a graph. So if I choose a scatter graph, I'll create this scatter graph. I'm just going to add a title to it. It's nice to see that our data already has a linear trend, so evidently the equation that we're using to determine our results is likely to be a valid one. Once we've got our graph set up, we can choose Graph Design, which is in the top, one of the top tabs. Uh, and from there, we can insert a chart element. So that could be um, axes, labels, or grid lines, all those aspects of a graph which we require to be. Once we've got our graph in the way that we like the look of it, we can start thinking about how can we plot this uncertainty. And to do that, we can add error bars. So again, if we go to Design, and then add chart element and go to error bars, we can choose our error bars. Now if you go to extra options at the bottom, if you head down, so you can add a fixed value. If I'm looking at the horizontal error bars at the moment, I can choose a custom value. And for this, I'm just going to pick that value for the X error bar or L error bar as a fixed value from the table. Now you can see from this, it's negligible and we can't really see it. What I'm doing now is rearranging it, um, just moving the graph around so I can get at the Y error bars. Now the y error bar is, bars vary as you vary the length, so we need to make sure that we input this data in that custom section for both vertical and top and bottom error bars and add those in. Now you can see now on the graph that those appear as our little um, lines above and below our, our dot, dots there. Now for a bit of a part that we'd usually do before start, starting upon the experiment is what does our gradient mean of this? Well our gradient here, resistance is resistivity times length divided by area. So if we plot resistance versus length, our gradient is resistivity divided by area. Now in our previous video we determined the area with an uncertainty, so if we can uh, obtain a gradient from our graph we can obtain the value of the resistivity because we have all the ingredients to do the calculation. So I use the symbol m, little m here for gradient, not to confuse the mass, as sometimes it can be done. Now to add a gradient onto it from our curve, what we have to do is select the data that we're interested in, um, add chart element, go to tread line and choose a linear tread line. Once it's there, we can double click on the gradient and scrolling down if we display the equation upon the chart. This equation is of the form y equals mx plus c. Um, from this we can determine our gradient. What a lot of students forget to do, particularly for gradients or compound uh, variables when things are multiplied together, is to include units. And when you have a gradient, you should always include a unit with a gradient. In this case, we're dividing resistance by length, so we end up with ohms per meter. Resistivity itself is measured in ohm meters, and to determine that value, all we have to do is we find our area we found in the previous video, um, we just have to move our graph to do that. We take our value of, of our gradient, multiply it by the area, and we end up with our resistivity. And there is our resistivity. It's 1.25 times 10 to the minus 6 ohm meters. Now that we have a graph with the best line through it from which we've determined the resistivity, we can use this to find an uncertainty, use two gradients to find an uncertainty in the value of our gradient from which we can have an uncertainty in our resistivity. This is what we're going to do in our follow-up video, the, the final one.